We about ready? <laughs> you take your seat, Chief. <laughs> All right, we'll get started. So I did this class last year for priority as well, and I think a lot of you guys webcasted here from Loudon City. But for those that don't know who I am, my name is Brennan DeBoer, and I'm the Deputy Director of the Ninth Drug Task Force. And uh, stop me at any point in time, and we'll do questions. We changed the PowerPoint up quite a bit from last year, so there's some new stuff on there. This slide was on here last year, but we updated the year. Um, the incidents that we went over, cocaine, heroin, morphine, other, and meth. And does anybody have any idea? I think we talked about this last year. What the other was? Prescription pain pills, primarily. And also, your others are also going to be considered in that as your fentanyl. All right, your car fentanyl, your acetyl fentanyl. We'll go through all the different fentanyls. As well as gravel, which we'll talk about a little bit. Your spices, your bath. The first thing we'll talk about is the opioids. They're still pretty popular. For our state specifically, our numbers have gone down it's from last year. One of the main reasons is probably because of the crackdown on pain clinics. We hit that one in Lenore City, or FBI did, and it was an extremely busy pain clinic. People were traveling from other states to, to travel to Lenore City to go to that pain clinic, as well as multiple counties in uh, northern Tennessee, west Tennessee. We'll skip these here. Okay, and the main reason is, is money. So last year when we came here, probably the most popular medication when we come here okay. is going to be oxycodone. All right, this year the trend has changed quite a bit. Really probably two reasons. They want something more powerful is one. And number two, a lot of the distributors of oxycodone or its uh, generic forms have made them somewhat tamper-proof. All right, so they're a little bit more difficult to put up in a needle and in inject in your arm, which is primarily the way that these people are using them as opposed to orally or by snorting them. So the most popular drug this year for us with prescription pain pills is going to be oxymorphone. Opana is the brand name. Does anybody have any idea what Opana or oxymorphone goes for on the street? We're paying $130 for a 40 milligram oxymorphone oral panel. All right, to buy it, and obviously we're not we're not buying them to use, but we're buying them in you know undercover drug deals, and they're 130 bucks for one pill. A normal prescription to a pain clinic right now is 90 40 milligram opanas. They give you 120 30 milligram rocasets for breakthrough pain, and then they give you Xanax or Klonopin for your anxiety, which I don't understand. How could you ever be anxious? feeling so great for 30 days out of the month. So but th that's what we look forward to now. And there's no telling what the next prescription pain pill that will come out that will be even more potent than oxymorphone. All right, we talked about this last year, about how we got here. The pain standards that we went through all right, in 2001, where, where, where they now ask you what your level of pain is, when you go into a doctor's office or ER visit, all right, that's been included as of 2001 as one of the vitals. There it is. Okay. Now we moved up. 2015 numbers, for some reason, aren't out yet. In 2000, and last year we did uh, 2013 numbers. We were at uh, number three. In 2014, we moved up to number two. We're going to come back down once the numbers come out for 15 and 16. We'll probably be at five or six. It's gone down three point something percent in 2016. Okay. This slide was important to me for the simple fact that it, it breaks down doctors, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, and who was doing the top amount of prescribing during 2015. All right, so a lot of these pain clinics 
aren't maintained by a doctor. A doctor is there signing off on the nurse practitioner's work, but primarily you never see a doctor. All right, you're only going to see a nurse practitioner. All right. Top 50, 11 of them are only MDs. 33 are nurse practitioners. Okay, so which means the, the primary prescriptions for C2s specifically that are being prescribed to the street are going to be through nurse practitioners rather than MDs, rather than your family doctor that you go and see on a regular basis. Okay, and those MDs, those are going to include your oncologists, or people that have a severe need to prescribe this pain medication. And we're still looking at nurse practitioners being the top prescribers. Okay. I just have to find where we are. Is this us here, guys? Is that our county? 91 incidents, prescription drug incidents. All right, so we have up to 2015, the overdose deaths. All right, these overdose deaths are going to include prescription pills, fentanyl, heroin, any other illicit drug that you could possibly overdose on. It's, it's rare to overdose on methamphetamine. More than likely, you're going to have a heart attack or, or some other medical condition for being up so long. All right, the pain clinics, they haven't changed. We still have five. Okay, we did this slide last year. Okay, we looked at the United Kingdom. This, what this is, is the amount of oxycodone shipped to the United States within 2015 period of time. Okay, it showed that the United Kingdom had 200 kilograms of oxycodone shipped to the United States, or to, to the United Kingdom. All right, there was the United States. Okay, we far surpassed everybody. 79,700 for those that can't see it. All right, so now we're going to spend some time on the important stuff that we maybe didn't cover last year. All right, the most important being heroin. Everybody pretty much has an idea what heroin is, and everybody's seen it due to the overdoses that they may have responded to, as well as the news. All right, it's being publicized quite a bit in East Tennessee. Um, heroin can be used the same way meth can. All right, so injected, snorted, inhaled, sniffed, or smoked. All right, usually... It comes in that picture shown up top. All right, a brown, sand-like substance. All right, kind of, I guess, similar to cocaine. A little bit more rocky. And last year I said the other way that we can have or see heroin would be black tar. But if I remember correctly, last year I said we never see black tar. All right, it's, it's not common for East Tennessee or anywhere currently except for California as of last year, to see black tar heroin. And we're going to talk about black tar here in just a second. All right, the incidents for heroin as of 2015, where are we? We're right here, two. All right, 16 and 17 numbers are going to be exponentially higher than that. All right, some nicknames for it. Boy, tar, China white, smack, white horse, H. Gag, snow, we can all read them. Um, how they're commonly packaged. Heroin is usually packaged different from most other drugs. The main reason for that is heroin is a lot less dense than any other drug. All right, so if you were to package it into a plastic baggie, a lot of the product is going to stick to the baggie, the inside of the baggie. So they package it in different things like wax paper, lotto tickets, Magazines, specifically porno mags, usually. Um, they'll put it in balloons, but you can find it in plastic baggies. We hardly ever find it in plastic baggies. All right, because there's too much loss of the product when you're selling such a small amount. When a dealer sells heroin, they don't sell it in half gram, gram quantities commonly, unless they're selling to another dealer. All right, heroin is usually purchased in points. The points consist of one tenth of a gram. A tenth of a gram is two user amounts. So you would usually use half of that in one dose. 
if you were injecting it, if you were snorting it. All right, it's commonly labeled with stamps. Most heroin, the way when it's packaged, has some sort of stamp on the outside of the package. All right, and it's branding. People want to brand their heroin for the main purpose of being able to advertise how good it is. All right, so whether you call it Obama or Trump or any number of names, I'll show you some, there's some stamps here that you can see. Nike, MySpace, that's obviously an old one, Target. Okay, and usually what dealers will do in the major cities, Knoxville probably stepping up to become one of them, is they want to be able to promote that product as the best product on the street. All right, so I think we talked about this a little bit last year. They'll take a, a brand like Target, and they'll take the heroin that they've acquired from their source. All right, now they have to cut that heroin in order for them to make a large amount of money. When they cut that heroin, they're going to cut it with something like fentanyl, all right, car fentanyl. Any number of fentanyl type products that are sent over from China in order to bulk their product up, make it more potent. Because when we get heroin in Knoxville, it's already been cut. So we might be selling 20% pure heroin, right? as opposed to methamphetamine, which is usually 98% pure. All right, so they want to bulk the product up. In order to bulk it up, they have to put something with much higher level of potency to make it more attractive to people. The number one thing that makes heroin attractive to users is whether somebody overdoses on it. Not whether they die or not, but whether they overdose. So if Alex was a heroin user, right, he bought his heroin, and he bought Target, and he overdosed, whether he died or not, if he comes back, he's going to tell everybody how good Target is. All right? If he dies, people are going to find out he went and bought Target, and they're all going to want it. All right, so whether the dealer cuts all of his product with that small amount of fentanyl, or whether he just says, hey, give Alex's dose of fentanyl in it, and they're just going to see the numbers go up. All right, everybody on the street is going to be asking their dealers if they have Target. All right, so it's just a, it's a huge advertising and selling point for them. So as of April 2017, East Tennessee has started to see black tar heroin. We had no recordings of black tar heroin in the last couple of years at all. All right, up 420 of 2017, April 20th, our group took off four and a half ounces of it. All right, which is record numbers for around here. Nashville, they see it. All right, but we had never seen it. All right, and black tar heroin is extremely difficult to do. And you, you almost wouldn't notice it if, if you guys were to go into a home. It's sitting on the table. And it looks exactly like black tar. Let's see if I threw a picture of it in here. I didn't, but I'll bring one up. It's on the flash drive. Okay. The, the main cutting agent or the processing ingredient for black tar heroin is morphine. That's what they make it with. All right. It's like a rock. It's extremely tough to deal with, um, but the potency is stronger than regular heroin, and the high lasts longer. Okay, the way that they would cut black tar heroin is they'd use something like sugar, melt it down, combine it with black tar. You can't cut black tar with any type of powder or fentanyl. So that's one thing that you guys can, can be aware of. If you show up at a scene and you happen to see this black tar substance sitting on a plate next to somebody that overdosed, more than likely fentanyl is out of the equation. Okay, because you can't combine that white powder with this thick, ridiculously hard to deal with substance that black tar is. Okay, now obviously I said that that's not common, and it's not. All right, here's what we're seeing as common. The common cut for heroin in East Tennessee is fentanyl. All right, now. Last year, we talked about car fentanyl and, 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 and other types of fentanyl that haven't been seen in the drug market before, but how potent they were. And we hoped that it would never get to the point where they came out as drugs on our streets. All right, but that's all changed. And the way that it's changed is China has taken advantage of our drug laws and said, we're going to make these products. All right, we're just going to alter them just a little bit, the chemical composition of them. And we're going to sell them as what they are. So 
when you make a chemical, you obviously get to name it based on the molecules that are combined in the chemical. All right, and they're going to sell that as a product to go out on the street. The problem with us in is we only meet once a year in order to brand new drugs as scheduled narcotics. All right, so they can get away with it for one year until we make it a scheduled narcotic and becomes a banned substance and we can actually charge people with it. But these substances that we're finding, we can't charge anybody with. They're not illegal. U.S. Customs can't seize the package. They're not illegal. So they have to send them through. Whether they're going to kill people or not, until you get to the point where you break that product down and either mix it with something like heroin or just sell it in its, in its original form, it doesn't become illegal. So possession of the package or acceptance of the package, it's perfectly legal for them to do it. Okay? The, the biggest problem that we saw with fentanyl is that can it be absorbed through the skin. All right? It made law enforcement susceptible to exposure. It made EMS and fire personnel susceptible to exposure. All right. And what we talked about last year is that there's, there's one of two things that's usually going to happen with fentanyl specifically. All right. The exposure through the skin is going to cause you to either feel amazing or number two is that you're going to get extreme. All right. Death in regard to fentanyl through the skin is, is probably unlikely for law enforcement or for fire or EMS. Okay? This product here, in its true fentanyl state, is manufactured in Mexico now, is how we get it. Okay? We can also order it online, but usually it's not true fentanyl. All right? You're getting a research chemical, you're getting a product that the Chinese chemists are making over there and sending up here. 275 positive lab results from 1116 to 5417 in East Tennessee alone. Okay, 90% of those lab results were from testing of heroin at the Knoxville lab and not pure fentanyl in itself. All right, so the majority of these were drug agents doing or traffic stops. So we're advised or we're confiscating drugs through traffic stops and we're sending it to the lab for testing. And the lab results are coming back positive for fentanyl. All right, so 275 up until 5417. So let's talk about the effects of, of heroin. Number one, for our community, so our non users. And, and a lot of times people ask us why we were, would target users or at the user level. And most times we don't. But here's the effect that it has on the community, is that 80 to 90 people, and I'm, I'm estimating one, all right, for the simple fact that they have to get high every day. If they don't hold employment, that means they don't make any money. If they don't make any money, they have to get out on the streets and figure out a way to get the high for that day. A normal package of heroin currently is between $30 and $40 a, a point, a tenth of a gram. All right, so at the minimum, and that, that high only lasts 30 minutes to an hour. At the minimum, each day in order to not be sick, they would have to make 30 to 40 bucks. Usually, they need to make about 100 to stay high majority of the day um, and not start going through withdrawals before they go to bed that night. That $100 has got to come from retail theft, All right, going into your homes, your outbuildings while you're at work, any number of property crimes that you can consider that CID or investigators have to work, that's the effect that we have on the community. All right? For a family, everybody obviously knows the effect on the family. I'm sure everybody in this room has either a family member or a friend that has at one point in time been involved in the addiction to opioids, heroin, methamphetamine. So we don't need to talk about that too much. Law enforcement. We have to now respond to the overdoses as well as you guys, all right, and then also have to come up with a response in order to try to thwart some of the activity that's going on during the day by the users, as well as investigate the dealers. Hospitals, okay, you go to places like Cleveland, Ohio, Chicago, it's, they're nonstop inundated with overdoses coming in all day long. 
And, I mean, you guys know how pissed off they are when you give them Narcan and have to bring them back. That $100 that they spent on that dope is now gone because you guys either had to give them an injection or a nasal spray. Okay? But it's calls for service for people that might need your help, elderly people that, that are you know, having medical problems, heart attacks. We get inundated with calls for overdoses. All right? And I'm pretty sure on an overdose call, unless they sign, you have to transport, don't you? So medical personnel for the streets in regards to paramedics, the fire response to every overdose as well. All right. The user, we all know the effects on the user. The spread of disease, hep C. You'd be shocked. Um, actually, I, I take that. You guys wouldn't be shocked at all because you guys have to go through those medical questionnaires. More, more than likely, they're going to tell you, you know, who has hep C and who doesn't. We're surprised about how many people we encounter or they have hep C. HIV, not as much as hep C, but just by the needle usage and the sharing of needles. Also, 90% of the traffic stops that either we make or home searches, they contain needles as well. Which has a. I was just going to have two comments to make on what you said. And it's just, I'm Eric, I'm a director of priority. Sure. So I'm at Fort Loudoun. Uh, HIV, huge uptick in East Tennessee and HIV. So the Tennessee Department of Health has come out and said basically they're kind of mandating us to do additional testing because there's a huge uptake in HIV. The other thing I was going to address is Narcan. Um, if you guys get Narcan, and I think it'd be a protocol, you have to, but transport them in. Because the Narcan's half-life will be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, depending on your metabolism. The half-life of a lot of these drugs, now heroin is short, fentanyl is short, and the half-life of these drugs is much longer. If you don't transport them in, you're going to push this off a lot. You just have to transfer them in. We have to watch them for three hours. Then we get them out. But I don't want you guys exposed to that right. risk. And these people are going to try to sign out, and they're going to try to do that. They're, they actually legally can't. Okay? If you had to Narcan them, you're going to be protected in transporting them in against their will. And they're a pain in the butt to deal with. I'm going to tell you that. The Narcan people, you guys deal with it more than I do. Okay? Yeah. It's massive hassle. I love what you guys do. I'm just trying to protect you. Great. No, thank you. And we already talked about the crime issue. Okay, let alone the robberies and stuff that we deal with of drug dealers. Um, just the amount of theft that goes on is, is unbelievable. We took off a, a dealer down at the Philadelphia Sweetwater line. Three 30-foot storage units full of stolen property. It takes days to catalog and try to attempt to return that property. You know, so, and, and all it is, is is these users going out on the street during the day trying to acquire anything they could possibly acquire in order to sell to the dealer or to trade to the dealer for their dope. Okay. These have still been pretty popular, right? The fentanyl disguised as oxycodone. We had a couple more seizures. Loudoun County hasn't. Um, Putnam County has, Nashville has. We're finding pill presses coming in from overseas on a pretty frequent basis. Um, the only purpose for the pill press is in order to make pills like these and take advantage of the sale and the high price of these prescription pills. I mean, once somebody figures out or gets a stamp for oxymorphone or opana, at $130 a pill, you can fill it with a small amount of fentanyl, the rest steroids fortune. A couple months you could be done. Close up shop and move somewhere else. Alright, the, the primary primarily the pills that we're finding are Xanax and Mbox 30s which are Roxycodone or Oxycodone they're the generic form. They're pills that we find that are, are uh, um, made into fentanyl pills and they use those cuts. They use steroids there's a couple of different cuts. I'm not sure the names of the, the uh, um, chemicals that they use to put in them. But primarily, they're using the fentanyl in kilo or half kilo form and breaking it down and just making thousands of pills instead. All right, it's an easy way. Fentanyl and heroin still haven't become the drug that everyone chooses. They would much rather, at this stage for Loudoun County, they would much rather use prescription pills because that's what they're used to and been doing for years. So if they can 
get their hands on prescription pills, that's what we're moving to is them coming to try to find heroin um, or fentanyl. But if they're available, they're going to buy them. So if they can make these look like oxycodone or roxycodone, 30 or 15 milligram, they're going to sell them in record numbers. About fifteen thousand a kilo. Two point two pounds. Overdoses? No, we're if for for street level purposes for us to buy drugs. It's primarily we're targeting heroin and methamphetamine. Morphine pills, though, have kind of gone off a couple years ago for us. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing. Morphine, primarily, that's how you get high off of morphine pills is by shooting them. So if they have now got accustomed to the needle, which more and more have every day, if they can get access to pills like morphine to to shoot up, it's pretty easy. Uh, how do we play that video? There you are. Oh, before I go to the video, here's that stop. You can barely see it, but that's the black tar. What they did was took Dixie cups from the hotel bathroom because they had nowhere to put this stuff. It sticks to everything. So every cutting board they use, it's stuck to. Every knife they use to try to cut it, it's stuck to. So they shoved it into Dixie cups. And we're, we're traveling around with it inside of Dixie cups. It's almost impossible to even cut this with a razor blade. That's how tough it is. Okay, and that was four ounces, almost four and a half ounces of it. Smoking it. They can inject it also. If you were to light it up, it's going to start to, you have to add water to it as well, but you're going to put it up in a spoon, all right, a small amount of it, add a little bit of distilled water, and they're going to draw it up in a needle just the same. But you have to cut it off. I mean, it's that tough to, to deal with. Yeah, so. No. I'm trying. It's not working, of course. Yeah. The, turn the sound off, the HDMI, turn it off, and then kill people.
All right, we good? Okay. Before I get on fentanyl, let's show you the, the difference between the real and the fake. One, one thing that's noticeable on fake pills that are, that are pressed outside of a factory is they're, they're going to start breaking away on the top. You can kind of see that one's a little bit deformed. The pill press is not as sharp as it would be coming out of a factory. It's one way for us to be able to look at pills and say, hey, those don't look right. We want to send those off and ensure that they're not you know, Xanax, that they're something else. All right, so the video was going to show us a couple things in regard to fentanyl. One thing it does show us in the video that I also grabbed the picture from was the, the lethal amount of the two different drugs, all right, when we talk about heroin as opposed to fentanyl. All right, so you see how much fentanyl is contained inside that glass jar as opposed to the amount of heroin that's in the one next to it. Okay. It's, it's an extremely potent substance. We're going to get into car fentanyl and the rest, and the amount, won't, you can't even see the amount of car fentanyl that would be in that glass container as opposed to the heroin container. All right, here's a couple more of the fentanyl pills. Percocet was in Putnam County. Loudoun County had the R215s, which are down here at the bottom left. All right, the M-Box 30s you see up top, top left, extremely popular to make. Okay, carfentanil. We talked about this last year as kind of like a joke. I shouldn't say that. It wasn't a joke so much as it was not seen on the U.S. drug market as being sold. All right, it's an analog of fentanyl, 10,000 times more potent than morphine at one microgram. Right, and then it was used in the in the Moscow theater crisis, 2002. Right, they used it to subdue the hostage takers. All right, what ended up happening is they they put it through the ventilation system in the building, and they killed everyone, hostage takers and hostages alike. All right, because the drug was so potent and they didn't have anything to reverse the effects. All right, it's currently used as an elephant sedative all right, in veterinary type situations. They also use it on hippopotamuses, I mean, huge animals. Can be easily absorbed through the skin. When we talk about this stuff being absorbed through the skin as opposed to just regular fentanyl being absorbed through the skin, this stuff will kill you for sure. Okay, laboratories that make this stuff, we did level A clan lab school in... Um, California a couple years ago, and there is no other option but a level A suit fully encapsulated SCBA in order to break down one of these labs. If you guys remember back in the day with meth labs where you guys had to respond, you're just using a respirator or using a Tyvek suit, it's not even an option with these labs, okay? If you're sweating and you touch this stuff, more than likely you're going to die, okay? For you to be able to take carfentanil on its own, through a needle, I don't see any other way than it killing you. Okay, What they're going to use this for is the small amount of carfentanil they'll have to add to their heroin product to bulk it up because of the potency of carfentanil as opposed to regular fentanyl. So if they can get their hands on this through a Chinese lab that's sending it over, they're going to make a fortune to bulk up their product. All right. In the video, it showed... Uh, two EMS workers showing up at a um, a scene in, I believe it was Philadelphia, and the people were laying on the ground, sweating profusely, blue, not breathing. They brought them back, and it was it was car fentanyl that they found. And the captain or whoever the supervisor was said that the PPE that you guys use is sufficient for car fentanyl type situations, okay? You guys using rubber gloves, right? I mean, you're not touching, I mean, people uh, other than maybe them vomiting on you, and I'm not sure if that would be an issue where you'd be exposed. But more than likely, what you guys use, it, law enforcement, on the other hand, a lot of times don't use the PPE that you guys would use in the medical field or in the field with fire and, and EMS. All right, so that can be more of an issue for us. But here's one thing to think of. So I know the incident that we had up here on, on Hill Street where the sister came home 
and found the brother unresponsive, unconscious in the house, called it a heart attack. Not a normal response for law enforcement. Okay, more likely a response for fire and EMS to show up. All right, let's just say that same situation, a sister comes home and finds her brother unresponsive. They call you guys to show up. All right, she's not aware of any drug use, so you guys wouldn't request law enforcement. All right, you come in, and that bag that you guys carry with your equipment, you set it down on the table on top of a package or a piece of paper, all right, that maybe contains their package from China with car fentanyl. The pressure of that bag is like hitting flour with dough, all right? It's going to spread. If that gets airborne, all right, and it's, it's real fine dust of a product, you guys are going to be exposed. Law enforcement did it. It's also on the video, okay? Both of them thought that their body was shutting down. All right, what they did was they pulled open the plastic bag, all right, of the product. It was carfentanil. They pull it open, and when you pull it open, you're releasing that seal, and some of the powder came out. All right, you didn't even see it come out. It just came out. All right, and normally if it was just heroin or if it was cocaine or anything like that, it wouldn't even affect you. But this stuff, yeah. You know, so you putting that bag down on the table and then you kneeling next to the bag and that powder being forced out of where it is and going right into your line of sight or breath or nose, okay, could be an issue for you. I found this yesterday. U.S. First Responder Association claimed that several first responders have been hospitalized due to exposure. Um, they say that it produces a longer lasting high. And we have six cases, East Tennessee 2017, car fentanyl found inside of heroin Okay, at the Knoxville lab. All right, so it's here. They're using it. Okay, acrylyl fentanyl. Some genius in China decided that he could make a drug, an analog of fentanyl that is resistant to naloxone. Okay, they haven't been able to figure out what they can make in order to make a, 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 a drug like naloxone that would be able to be used on people that use accrual fentanyl. But we had also six cases at the TBI lab. One of them was, I don't know, Travis, you might remember, maybe some of the people that worked the upper end. The overdose, the guy in the bathroom, his girlfriend was also using drugs of stuff they got from China. She walked in, found him in the bathroom unconscious. Yeah, do you remember it? Maybe. It was on the upper end of the county. It was acryl fentanyl. Okay, and it came from China. They found the package at the house. 44 deaths in Chicago in 2017. Okay, people are just going online. Yeah, here we go. We could go and buy it right now with Suarez's computer. Have it shipped to his house. I guarantee you, more than likely, it'll get me. It'll make it through. I can get a hundred grams of it for seven hundred ninety-seven dollars, eight hundred dollars. Okay, I told you guys before, thirty to forty bucks a point for heroin. I can buy a hundred grams of this for eight hundred bucks. Okay, they can make a fortune. All right, and China is taking advantage of the drug laws in the United States and the ability for us to only be able to catch up every year to push these products. Uh, I know somebody actually asked me earlier today about this gray death stuff. Okay, looks like concrete. Anybody heard of it? Yeah. Several cases, East Tennessee. It was in the news a couple days ago. Did I put the news report in there? No, I didn't. Okay, looks like concrete. Um, has several potent opioids. Whenever you see these numbers, like U47700, you're going to... It's research chemicals. It's China. All right? It's being shipped over just like acryl fentanyl, um, like car fentanyl would be. But what they do is they take several of these components and they mix them together all right, to make their drug. And, and specifically now, they're calling it street name of gray death. All right? I don't know of any cases specifically at the lab in East Tennessee. They're not calling it gray death at the lab, and I don't know if they're specifically testing for it. Once it tests positive 
for one of these two, that's what they're going to list on the lab report. Okay? They won't list U47700 because it's not a controlled substance. All right? So I don't know that we can actually quantify at this point in time in 2017 whether Gray Death specifically has been involved in any overdoses. What they're going to say is it's either heroin or fentanyl. All right? And they, they found it to be eight times more potent than morphine. So its potency level is actually not any higher than just regular fentanyl. Okay, but the problem is, is it contains all three drugs. Well, two drugs and one control substance. Okay, does anybody have any questions about gray death? No? What about any of the fentanyl? Carfentanyl? Because we're going to move on from it. No? Okay. And here's what I was talking about earlier. The small change in the chemicals or the molecules that are attached. There's acetylfentanyl. So it has that little line right there for the chemists, whatever that means. But it makes China allowed to distribute it into the United States legally. Okay, flocka or gravel, also known as bath salts, started in South Florida for the United States. All right, everybody heard about the the stories of people eating each other's faces off and all that. All right, nothing good comes out of South Florida when it comes to drugs. We can find that our trends that we see up here. Oh, you live in South Florida? No, I think we should live in drugs. True. You mean prostitution? Um, but primarily, if we were to go down to South Florida, EMS, fire, law enforcement, and see the trends that they're dealing with currently, in a, in a year, two years, it's exactly what we'll be dealing with because it all seems to push north. All right, Retail fraud, credit card fraud, the skimmers on your, on your uh, credit union or your ATMs, they all started down there. All right, And they all move up north. All right, also produced in China. If, if I were to use uh, Swartz's computer again, we could buy flocka or gravel all day long. Any color you want, we could even get gummy bears with it on it. You know, it's for the kids. So the effects last a lot longer than most drugs usually last longer than methamphetamine. Okay, and the hallucinogenic tendencies of flocka or gravel are much higher than methamphetamine in itself. When we talked about Meth, it's 94 to 98% pure. Okay? This stuff is research chemicals. Nobody has any idea what it does to you. You take it and you don't even know the potency of it. Excited delirium. Okay? We've had several cases with people on it that have experienced it. I'm sure the, the, the ER has as well. All right? Bath salts, these all, this is what it is, okay? It's not MDMA anymore. They took MDMA and said it's a popular club drug, all right, ecstasy, MDMA. And they, for the most part, online name it after MDMA. It's not MDMA. MDMA comes from an oil out of South American trees. It's rare, it's difficult to find. Now they just make research chemicals that mimic what that oil, sassafras oil, actually does to the body, okay? The amazing feeling that, that ecstasy is supposed to give you, all right, they mimic it in, in drugs like these. What's that, a gram for 40 bucks? It's a good deal. It's cheap. Okay, the grams before, what was it, $800 for how much? You remember? All right, there's the gummy bears. Okay, another common name for it is APVP. It'll come back from the lab as APVP. Okay, that's the drug name, which is now a controlled substance. But our group bought almost two kilos of it, thinking it was a controlled substance, and it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't a scheduled narcotic. We spent a lot of money for really no reason. But we learned our lesson. But it's extremely popular down at the Strip in Knoxville at the clubs, 
All right, they'll sell this all day long, as well as UPS and FedEx deliver it to homes every day. Okay, but the effects are going to mimic methamphetamine, staying up for days at a time. All right, all the medical conditions that will come from you having lack of sleep for that period of time. Hmm, let's see. Okay, any questions on flocka or gravel? All right, who's heard of dab? Shatter? Nobody? Okay, dab is extremely popular because of the legalization of marijuana in Colorado, California. There's a couple others. Anyway, it, it's similar to hash oil. Everyone's heard of hash oil, right? Okay, so it's a extremely pure THC oil that people will use in replacement sometimes of just smoking marijuana. All right, you can get dab, you can smoke it. I'll go to the next. That's what it looks like, but that's the pipe. So they do, they do, which is going to be an issue for fire as well as EMS. Okay, they're using butane to manufacture dab or this hash oil. All right, so that's the pipe that they're going to have to use to smoke it through. It has a similar appearance of black tar heroin. All right, and if you were to just see it in a small amount, you would actually think probably it was black tar heroin. All right, but it's actually almost pure THC. All right, that's what it usually looks like. All right, it's usually made in home labs unless you buy it from somebody that's manufacturing it out west. Um, when it's made in home labs, they use uh, those glass dishes that your parents or grandparents cook casseroles in. Pyrex, that's it. Okay. Um, let's see. And here's how it's made. Okay. And the most dangerous part of it is the solvent that they use, butane or lighter fluid. Okay, it has the hot heat at such a high temperature and the flare back with that gas being up in the air. If you'll watch like Drug Zinc and the rest of them, it'll show how these guys have blown themselves up by trying to manufacture dabs or hash oil. You do. <laughs> yes. It's extremely high quality. Okay. Um, there's a picture. There's the dish. Okay, so we'll go through methamphetamine. Uh, what time is? Oh, I'm almost done. So we'll fly through this. All right, we don't need any of that. Okay, so we still deal with methamphetamine. I'm not going to obviously show you guys the manufacturing of um, methamphetamine in meth labs any longer. All right, we went through that last year, and it was um, it's a thing of the past for us. Okay, we rarely ever see it. We had one this year, and it was a Red P lab, and it was in Meigs County. All right, Red P labs are extremely rare. And the only reason it happened is because the guy went to federal prison for Red P cooking dope, and he got out and decided that he wanted to try it again. And that's the only reason we had a Red P lab. Other than that, we, don't, we rarely have any meth labs anymore. Okay, the only meth that we get is crystal meth. Right? I guarantee every fireman and EMS worker here has had to deal with people on methamphetamine because it's rampant in Loudoun County as well as the counties surrounding Loudoun. All right? So everybody knows what it does to them, to those individuals. Like climbing rocks at big lots thinking it's a side of a mountain. Um, you know, up all hours of the night, walking the streets. All right? That's what it looks like. All right? For those of you that don't know. This brown tint is what we see more and more, actually what we buy more and more of now, as opposed to the crystals that are dry and clear. The stuff we get comes up wet. The main reason for it coming up wet is it's shipped into the United States as a liquid, as opposed to a crystal. It goes to its source city, which for us is usually Atlanta, and then it's what they call a conversion lab, and they make it into the crystal substance. Once they make it into the crystal substance, they put it immediately in a package and ship it to where it's going to go, whether it's Knoxville, Nashville, um, South Carolina, North Carolina, wherever. And it's still wet. All right. Because we're not having to wait weeks for it to be brought across the border and brought up here for it to dry out. So the dope that we're getting 
is wet dope. All right, and it has this brown tint to it. We won't go through. I don't need to explain. You guys are the medical professionals, not me. What the uh, physical effects are. Okay. Here's we did this last year too, and, and I just want to reiterate why this is important to me and and makes a lot of sense is how these drugs are taken. Okay, methamphetamine and heroin can both be taken the same way. Orally snorted, smoked, heat and vapor, and injected. Heat and vapor, those glass pipes that you guys are all seeing with the big round pipe or glass attached to the tube, all right, is the vapor part, okay, the heat part, all right. As you can see, in orally ingested, snorted, or smoked, this isn't there. The rush is missing. Okay, the rush is the most important part, and once they feel it, they chase it. All right, so if they're not getting the rush, they're not going to use any of these three methods of using the drug. Okay, the only two they have left are the heat and vapor and the injected. All right, Tennessee passed a law. Has it been two years now, AJ? No officer can't charge somebody for a needle if they tell them it's there. About two years. All right, so now you're a user and you've got two options. You can either use your dope with a needle or you can smoke it in a glass pipe like that. Glass pipe puts you in jail. Needle doesn't. All right, so I'll carry around a needle all day. There's nothing they can do to me unless I have dope. So why not just carry the needle? And now your only choice right now, if you don't have the glass pipe, is to start injecting. Okay? IV or intravenous drug users, users have gone through the roof. We almost assume everybody uses it by the needle. All right, we do find glass pipes, but usually it's because their needles or their, or their arms, their veins are collapsed. All right? They can't use them anymore. They can't find them. So they'll smoke it through the pipe. Okay, but that rush, that's what they're going to chase. And nobody uses it this way. Okay, brand new heroin users will try to snort it. But once they get... See, the way to heat and vapor it right here for heroin, they take tinfoil. All right, they take the heroin, they put it on it, add a little bit of water and they spread it out. All right, so now the tinfoil looks brown. It's all streaky and brown. Then they light it with a lighter from underneath and they use a pen. Take out the guts of a pen and smoke it. Okay, they're taking, they're smoking the vapor. All right, but once they get that rush, those are the only two choices. Smoke it by heat and vapor or inject it. All right, and for methamphetamine, here's where it's at. All right, normal, your dopamine levels are at 100. All right, let's just go all the way to the end. Why wouldn't you use meth? Or why do you think these people stay addicted to it? It's 1,250 for the use of methamphetamine. All right, that's the selling point in itself. You know, there's nothing else on that list that can even get you close. All right, questions, comments? I think my time's up. Everybody's good? You're welcome.